I'm over at the St. Constantine's Ukrainian Catholic Church today for uh, the Ukrainian Society told me that there was going to be a holodomer uh, uh, service at 10 o'clock today here, so that's why I'm came, I came down. So I'm hoping I'm going to be able to see that. I don't know that I can live it or anything. I'd have to ask the father, but uh, this is a beautiful church, and uh, Holodormer was yesterday, and uh, it's about the Ukrainian genocide, and um, they're going to do a service about that today, so I wanted to show up for it, and uh, it's basically a horrible story, and really our show yesterday was based on this, so this is an absolutely beautiful church. Um, they have all kinds of wonderful artwork. Um, these eggs. I know it's not lit in here. You can't see them, but they're really pretty. Um, all kinds of wonderful stuff. It's a wonderful place. And the lights turned on. But. It's wonderful. It must be an ostrich egg. This was a pretty good service. I could understand it very clearly, right? <laughs> In Ukrainian, I can't understand word of it. We were talking about this on our show yesterday at the Capitol, mm -hmm. the Holodormer, because yesterday was the official mm -hmm. time of it. Yeah. 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 And then we heard from the Ukrainian society or whatever that you had to do this thing today at 10 o'clock. So yeah. that's what we came for. So. Yeah. That's and this is a beautiful church. You have a yeah. really wonderful yeah. church yeah, here. This is a beautiful church. This, like, How long has this church been here? 
different than uh, Star 1971. But, but thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. But maybe you want uh, to another building here. We have school and corner. We have school. We, we, floor. We, we, we have coffee. You, 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 you also have like a little little museum over yeah, here with little, eggs. Yeah, the museum. What kind of what kind of eggs are those? Parishioners. Is this parishioners. Parishioners made them. Parishioners before uh, Easter time. Before Easter. Oh. And pain, pain Easter. Yeah, one of them's ostrich egg. Most of them are regular eggs. Yeah. yeah. You guys seen them yet? No. No, this is not about well, we'll walk over there, take a look. Yeah. yeah. All right. Get my camera on Cape Boros. It's beautiful. Yeah. Well, we'll probably go over and have coffee. So yeah. it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank yeah. You, thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Maybe uh, this one will help. Uh, Maria, do you want to pay attention to us? Чи ви б могли розказати трошки в англійській мові, не хочуть зняти короткі такі про Голодомор і про нашу парафію в англійській мові, щоб їм розкажуть, не приїхали цей Сен-Пол, з Мінаполіс, з Буклом, так само. Буклом Сенер, я. Трошки їм щось розказати, не щось будуть зняти. А звідки мене є? Ну, я не знаю, чи це і приватно, але це не знімали службу. Do you have any background of Holocaust? Do you know what that is? Holocaust, we know about. Yeah, we did. We did a show yesterday on Holodomor. Oh, you did. At the Capitol. Oh, you did. Yeah. Just the little bit. We we don't have a real high level of familiarity with it. Then we then we then we saw that you know the 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 Ukrainian society mentioned to me. Yes, you know. Let me call Luda because she did a lot of research on this topic. Okay. And uh, she's uh, she's at the coffee. Let me call her, and I can start. But she did like a ton of research on it, so she is the expert. Yeah, this is this is expert. Yeah, yeah I, I definitely know. I mean, I know. Because it was a horrible genocide, essentially, that killed off large numbers of people. Yeah. And I think it happened. Diana was saying it happened three times, but the primary one that you guys are talking about is 1933. Um, from 30 to 33. Yeah. That time. And there was two other times, one more recently in 1947. Yes, and, and then there was one that was like 1922, something like that. But the big one, the one that everybody talks about, I guess, is the one that was yeah, 80, one that 87. About, yeah. yeah. 87? 87 years ago, yeah. Oh, 87 years ago, yeah. So people who might have survived that would be quite old. Yes, yes. But their children might remember their, yeah, you know, like yeah. like my, my great grandma was born in 19, 1897 and lived through the Great Depression and all yeah, that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And I can tell you a story like from what my grandma used to tell me. That's basically what it is nowadays because the people, just like the Holocaust for the most part, people didn't, yeah. most of them are gone. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, 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 this is like after we go. Busy, busy, busy. busy. We enjoyed your service a lot. It was really good. And, can, and can Diana here, she feels like she's not worthy to have. But I think we're all. None of us are worthy, right? Uh, I didn't take communion today. Oh. I didn't either, but I'm not Catholic. You know. No, this is no problem. Yeah. This communion is communion. Like support our lives. This is, this is very important. So you give communion to people that aren't, aren't Catholic. My, my church is Lutheran, and, and they, they don't care who, if you're, you know, what you are. So. But basically, none of us are worthy, right? None of us are, so you just have to do what you can and, and try. So do our best and try to get forgiven. And try not to do it again. <laughs> but some of, us, some of us are on the naughty side, so... No, we, we have... <laughs> we're, all, we're all sinners. We, we, do, we, we do what we can. <laughs> Some of us are naughtier than others, though. The thing that I think it's really important to remember the history. You know, because... The Ukrainian one, uh, the whole Dahmer, uh, was really important. 
you know, no. because uh, back then people did not, the news did not travel like it does yeah. today. It was very locked in. Like I said, the people were not allowed to leave the country. Yeah. Yeah. So word, it was very hard for word to get out. Yeah. And um, so she's going to be the, the other one was was the Armenian genocide. Uh, massacre yeah. Also, yeah. was very bad, and um, enough people do not know about that. They don't yeah. remember that. Yeah. If the story isn't being kept alive yes. and being told. Well, and for years it was suppressed. You know, like the, the way that you know Russian propaganda worked, that you know, they really restricted that information. Didn't know. You're right. They did not let, let the Ukrainian people leave Ukraine. Exactly. Yeah. They were from actually guns, literally yeah. locked in. Yeah, and no TV, no radio. Why? No it's radio blocked, cars, really no, Everything was blocked. You know. And why? When? Why did they not allow them to leave? Why they lock them in? They didn't want the world to know. They didn't want the exposure. That was on they didn't purpose. want the world to know how so awful they were treating them. It's only when some people escaped, and there was a, I, I knew they can tell you the story, that someone who ended up working, uh, ended up working for Harvard, I think, did the research and did the book about it, but it was almost the press. Same for Armenian. And yep, the Armenians yeah. too. We, we actually worked very closely with the Armenian society. Yeah, I was trying to do some research on the Armenians and I did find some very big books on it, you know, yeah. and some, a lot of political books and stuff, yeah. but um, it's really hard to find that research. Yeah, 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 we actually work, there's a person who does the research and kind of promotes that um, out of the University of Minnesota. Yes, I have his book. Okay, okay. Do you guys know what his it's name like is? So if somebody wanted their book? <laughs> Do you know what his name is? Uh, I have the book at home. Yeah, I can get it. You can link it onto the thing, so you could, if somebody wanted to look at the book, they could. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't have it handy. I, mm -hmm. I have the book at home. It's, yeah. it's like this thick. Both the yeah. holodomer. Yeah. How do you guys pronounce holodomer? Holodomor. Okay, because I, I saw some debate on that. <laughs> there was a, I, what I did was I looked up the how to pronounce it. Oh yes. Uh, okay. But you, how do you say it again? Hello, Domo. Hello, Domo. My first letter, letter like the who. <laughs> okay. And yeah, we don't know. Yeah, you guys would know, right? Yeah, you guys would know. It's not G, it's not H, it's a little bit in between. So oh, a, yeah. There's no really a good equivalent, maybe like. But that was one of the things where basically the was it like a big percentage of the entire Ukrainian population that died as a result of that? Um, was it like at half? That time, at that time, the population of Ukraine was about 80 million. No. Uh, today, it's about 45 or so. So, and over the years, there's been this attempt to reduce the population from the Russia side, and different attempts, whether it's Hold War, World War II, even the war that's happening in Ukraine right now, they're dragging it out it's just to... De depopulate. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah and... You know, the, the Russians recently took a piece of the Ukraine, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. they wanted that. Yeah, and they're rewriting the history. Um, I'm surprised the Russians felt they, they could take attack Ukraine because Ukraine's a nuclear power. Used to be. Used, used to, to be, be, but they signed a treaty with the U.S., Germany, Russia, and Ukraine, where Ukraine gave up all the nuclear power, that was, nuclear weapons. That was prior to them having... So you give up your give up your nuclear power, yeah, and then the and Russians. Yeah, the treaty is signed that you know in case something that, that those nations would protect Ukraine, but they didn't. Well, wow. who wants to start a war? You know? uh, so Luda is our expert. On the holodomor. Well, I don't know about being expert. We did a we did a show at the Capitol uh, yesterday on on partly on holodomor. And I'm sorry, who are you? We, we just we, we just go to the Capitol and have a, a weekly meeting. We're not any organized group. We're just we're just uh, people that get run, together, run video, and talk about current events and history. Are you, but are you from? I mean, I'm, I'm not from Ukraine or anything. So. Well, I'm, I'm from Brooklyn Center. From She's from Minneapolis. She's from. St. Paul, we go to the Capitol to stand up for our everyone's freedom. Right. And against and censorship because they can't censor us, so we. We also had to get out the, the voice of stuff like yeah. this. You know, the Holodormer was yesterday. 
the, the fourth, the fourth. International national commemoration was yesterday. Yes. Yep. And then I talked to the Ukrainian Society, and they told me about this today. So we came over here because of that. Because this is a this is a significant thing, you know. It's just like the Holocaust, you know. This is genocide, and, and people don't talk about it that much. And it's not that well known. We were covering the uh, Sudanese issue going on recently, a few days, a few it was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. You know, a lot of these stories don't get out. You know, and the, the regular news media doesn't talk about it. Yeah, Facebook likes to censor, or you know, our stuff gets censored like crazy. Really? Oh, yeah. And it, what they, they shadow ban you, so you know. But so it's kind of hard to you know. Do you have a name, or who do you call yourself? Well, we got you know. I'm Cammy. No, your group. Do you have we don't have any groups, we but just, you know, we have a media type. We, refer to we have we have lots of groups. Crew at the Capitol. Yeah, Capitol gang. No, I understand, but you know, like it's important to us. If, if you're gonna publish something, we'd like to know oh, who, are, who oh, speaks on our behalf. Okay, that's that's an important thing for us. That's why I'm asking. Sorry, I don't no, understand. That's all right. No, yeah. no. So I'm we don't sorry. we don't have to talk to her. Then that's okay. I thought you meant mine. Yeah. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for yeah, thanks yeah, for yeah, hosting yeah. us in here, though. So. We're, we're not yeah, thank you. Yeah. But it doesn't get it to me. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I, I'm a long-time Minneapolis resident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I am Catholic uh, from birth. Mm -hmm. yeah. We think it's important to get the story out. My, so. my people, my people came here from Germany between the two world wars because of they wanted to be able to practice their religion freely and they didn't feel that they were doing that very well in Germany like anyway. I just want to let you know that I'm also heading the uh, Holdemore Education Committee at the Ukrainian American Community Center and we've done in the past few years a lot of work um, in, in collaboration with the, in terms of educating public and especially educators, teachers too. We worked with the Center for the Holocaust and Genocide Studies at the University of Minnesota. We've participated in summer seminars for teachers where we were teaching teachers, you know, about the Holodomor. And we also collaborated on uh, uh, creation of the ed educational page uh, at the center. They have pages for each uh, genocide. And the Armenians? Known, and known, known genocides, yeah, yeah, including genocides in Rwanda and Armenia and you know all over the world and so that's local here in it's at the University of Minnesota you guys okay. have a, okay. a, a website for that or some kind of a way to contact that if somebody wanted to contact you we, we saw the stuff in the flyer here sure. like I don't know if that's the, what you're what you it's in the bulletin here there was something about um, if somebody wanted to donate to it or um, yeah. you, you also could um, visit our it's Ukrainian American Community Center Facebook page yep. and also our website. We just have information about the Holodomor there. Uh, you know, I'm also the social media for Ukrainian Center person, so I publish a lot about. I don't, was it was it you that told us told me about about? I don't think it was you. It must not have been. So. No, no, Somebody. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just I'm you know. So where are they looking at locating this? Or is this, this is the thing in the flyer, here? yeah. So I think that was... Where is it? It's a Vitserk, Vitserk. It's a organized museum in Kiev. And they are going to raise money for this museum of the Holy Moro. But there is a museum of the Holy Moro in Kiev. They are going to open now, they are going to do something, or they are going to do something. Is this separate or is it the same? I can look. Yeah, it's in the flyer, yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, I know, I've seen this, I was just... Це є бачно на Відній цивільний музей Молодомору у світі. Місцем в'єдному українців маніфест на зламу собі музеї розпочати в Києві. То те, що вони розпочали робити, бачите? Вони продовжують його, бо вони не завершили. Тобто хочуть люди завершити ще якось. Не подали. Не знаю, що це буде. Державні кошти, бачите, вони подали, але загальна вартість будівництва Діляється державним вже по жовтні там було дев'ятнадцятого року. Це дуже цікаво, тому що існує, як ви знаєте, Голодомор ну це Голодомор в Києві вже існує. Це він не пам'ятає. Це із дев'ятнадцятого року, може, це саме. 
О, я мусила також, я не вникала в то все, знаєте, я про це так, я так. толком не знаю. Оце вже два роки будується, то вже So in any event, so yes, you know, the, there is a Holodomor Museum in Kiev, in the capital of Ukraine, which um, is now um, providing more information in English, including videos. They've, uh, as you, I don't know if you know, but uh, Holodomor was unknown people living in Ukraine for the longest time. Uh, because it was suppressed, it was suppressed at the time of the event, but it also was suppressed after the event for decades. In only 1990s, uh, with the breakup of Ukraine from the Soviet Union, the information started to become known, and, the, and Ukrainians themselves are still processing this trauma. Um, it's, yeah. it's been um, it's been very you know it's it's a long journey for the nation to understand what happened actually to understand the consequences of it and the, uh, the fact that people were not able to talk about it. They lived with that and millions of people died and imagine that when you lost, you know, all over the current territory of Ukraine that was happening and nobody was allowed. People were, you know, like, the difference between Holodomor and other genocides that a lot of them were, um, uh, you know, there is a lot of documentation, but in Ukraine, uh, it was so censored and kept under the lid, so to say, so tightly that there is not much actual photographical, let's say, evidence even about it. And now people are, you know, the, the historians, the enthusiasts are collecting lots of information and like I said Holdemore Museum in Kiev is doing that uh, but actually it became um, wildly known thanks to the diaspora specifically in the United States because um, the descendants of Holdemore survivors came to the United States after the Second World War as refugees and then they started to speak up and they started to contact you know, government officials, and um, that there was a huge commission uh, created in uh, in the 80s, where the um, survivor stories were collected and studied, and the U.S. commission. I'm sorry, I can't remember all the details very, you know, like very well, uh, but. Um, who was the professor from Harvard? Do you recall that? Uh, right. Um, the, the name. Sometimes the names are just escaping. I'm sorry, I can't. There was one in Minneapolis. You said University of Minnesota too, right? Or, or was it Harvard that you were saying? Um, uh, the one at the U is uh, Armenian descent. Oh, okay. Um, so he is the one that's running the Armenian Holodomor. Okay. Uh, Who are you talking about? Uh, I was talking about the professor at the U here. But who is it? The person you met was yeah. the person you met with. Uh, Marita, that person works for the Center for the Holocaust and Genocide Studies. Yeah. Yes. So he's representative of the Armenian community. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but I'm talking about uh, the one from Harvard. I don't know. Uh, uh, James no worries. Mace. Yeah. It's James Mace. Okay. James I'm Mace. Going. James Mace. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he was instrumental in collecting the um, testimonies of the survivors and then um, providing that information to the U.S. Congress. And um, there was a resolution that stated that indeed Holodomor was a genocide uh, after all the, you know, all the information was collected. Uh, Canadians have done a lot of work about um, educating as you probably know, there are a lot of Ukrainians living and have lived and continue living in Canada, and they have a very strong political voice there too. And so, uh, Holodomor commemoration is Holodomor is commemorated in Canada on the national level, um, and many schools, public schools, um, you know, Holodomor education is part of their curriculum too in yeah. Canada. So it's. Uh, that's good. I'd say I'd say after Ukraine, it's the. Is it still the case? Because a lot of times, a lot of culture right now is being canceled. You know, they're canceling all kinds of 
historical stuff, including the Holocaust, the regular Holocaust, and a lot of a lot of civics and stuff in school is being canceled. They don't want to talk about a lot of these things, you know, and people are worried about that. I don't know how it's going in Canada, but uh, no, in Canada there is no such problem. But here in the United in, in Minnesota, actually, I don't know if you're aware that this year uh, the um, State Department of Education is looking at the uh, social studies curriculum. It's happening, it happens usually once every 10 years. They look at what students should be studying. And um, there was a first draft, and when the first draft came out, the genocide studies was not even mentioned in it, including also the genocide of Native Americans here, you know, in Minnesota and overall in the US. And so there were a lot of, we were part of the group that was um, participating in public hearings uh, in uh, in defense and uh, you know trying to support the inclusion of genocide studies, all genocide studies, and of course including the Holodomor, into the um, school curriculum. And so, and we have to say that it's been successful. And um, again, Center for the Holocaust and Genocide Studies was instrumental in that as well. We worked together with them on this, and the second draft now does include um, genocide studies, including Holocaust and Holodomor, and also Native American. There's a huge push for the um, for study of the Native American history here in Minnesota and in the U.S. Um, now, what age group would you be pushing that? Uh, that's K-12 curriculum. K-12, yeah. About, K-12. You know, K-12, yeah. <laughs> but usually genocide studies are done, you know, in upper grades, you know, maybe upper, upper grades, elementary, yeah. middle school, high school, obviously, mm -hmm. due right. to the subject of the matter. Right. That is, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, so, the, 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 re, the, I got, I found this article um, that was asking about if the schools teach about mm. this. This, this, that's what got I know when I was in school, school, I don't recall started. them teaching about it, but that, right. of course, that was no, quite a while No, it wasn't ago. until I got into college that uh, I came across the Armenians and the, the Ukrainians. Um, yeah. I, I, I knew nothing of it when I was in high school. Nothing. Well, I mean, uh, so huh? how many years ago was that? I, was, I graduated from high school in 1972. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You in well, like were you in college said, in the 70s? I mean, as I said, since Ukraine, she, she's you know, only twelve. Like, of course, you didn't know that. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So it's, and now everything is being censored. So, yeah. we're lucky it's, to find. Like this, like like we were we were talking with the people from Sudan. Nobody nobody hears about that. Yeah. No, nobody. The mainstream doesn't talk about how there was a coup in Sudan. You know, yeah, and then, I, I was just fascinated with the the name of this church too. Oh yeah, you know? Constantine. <laughs> Constantine. You know, because from my, what I read, you know, not too many years ago about the Armenians and, and Const Constantinople and, well, yeah. you know, the story. But I don't know if you were actually, I don't, I don't think it's censored. You know, for example, just uh, for yesterday, President Biden issued a, a statement about the commemoration of Holodomor and, you know, we, that indeed yeah, the that's good, yeah. Genocide. So this is actually the first time, I think, this is pretty, like, historic for moment for in terms of the United States president mentioning and specifically addressing yeah. um, mm -hmm. this issue. So this is a huge deal. Um, sure, yeah. So, and of course, you know... He's going to be here on Tuesday. Oh, really? Yeah. And in the past, um, yes, in the past, yeah. governors of Minnesota um, issued also... Um, Proclamations. Proclamations um, yep. about the Holodomor commemoration. Yes. So, um, you know, I can't say that you know um, it's completely. And I just, but you're right. It's not in mainstream press, for example. It's there. Well, I can tell you, the average person has never heard of it. Yeah. They've never heard of this stuff. We've been we've been talking about it since yesterday a little bit, and I ran a few clips from various YouTube channels and stuff that were talking about it. And so, what's your YouTube channel? Where can we see this? Are you planning to post something? Yeah, we, we do it all the time. So. Okay, where are you posting? Just to our names, both all three of them. Yeah. What? All three of us post stuff. So. Yeah. No, but you have a YouTube where, channel. Where, where can I find? Watch the lake. Watch and, the lake. Yeah, on YouTube. Yeah. YouTube. 
What's yeah, the link? So, uh, there's some right. videos about geese and stuff there, too. <laughs> that's okay. That's, that, there's nothing, yeah. No. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Alrighty. I have oh, kids to take care of, so I better, I better run well, because I'm not sure what's happening with it was a, It was a pleasure meeting you guys, okay. so thank, thank you. you. Thank it you. was really great. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll definitely have to come down by, by here and actually take mass one time <laughs> because, you know, I'm a sinner. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so. Do you guys have that every, every uh, you, you guys call it Mass, right? Or you call it Communion? Mass. Mass, yeah. Every every Sunday or is it? Every day. Every day. Every day. Oh, we need it. Yeah. <laughs> Watch the lake. Watch the lake. I got Facebook is uh, Robert Marvin, too. Yeah. So. Yeah, she, just watch the lake like we, this? Yep. Yeah, it's all one word. Oh, it's one word, okay. Yeah. Would, would you like to share your, your name and phone number? If you give it to her, she can give you a link. And then I can uh, send you We'll the probably link. make a video or something. Um, or we'll piece it I together. I can give you my email. Uh, okay. You, want, uh, here. you just write it, write it down on a card. What? You know, a whole bunch of eggs. The, the father said that the parishioners are the ones who made them. That's an egg. Yeah. What are these? Okay. So that's quite a, a and they made these and artistic art in the taking. The father said that the parishioners were the ones who made these things. You know how the eggs are made? Well, I'm familiar with how birds make eggs. Uh. This is a very ancient Ukrainian tradition, and we have classes where at many churches in the Ukrainian center. So you take the white egg, and then you create the design that you want to be in white. You have, you, you have a special instrument, it's a wooden stick um, with like a little funnel on it and you warm it up over the fire and you dip it in, in you um, scoop up some wax and the wax melts inside it and then you draw lines with that molten wax. So what To you make the white. First, because it's white, so you cover the parts that you are going to keep white with wax. Then you dip the egg into the next color, the lightest. So it goes from lightest to darkest. Usually it's yellow. So then you get out the egg and it's yellow now. And you cover with, again, with egg, uh, with wax, 
the parts that you're going like for example where you see this deer you see there are white triangles white lines yeah. and then yellow you know this one's broken looks like yeah because it's an looks so uh these are they're called pisamki from the word pisati Pisati means to, to paint, literally, to draw. So, yeah. But what you draw on the egg, you draw the wishes. So eggs were given during the Easter time yeah. or Christmas time, and they were pre represented as somebody's wishes to you because each design has a meaning. Like, for example, animals are the symbol of prosperity, and the unending lines are the symbols of eternity, and so on. There are a lot of you know symbolic meaning behind each of the designs and um so then it would be yellow and then you would cover with wax the parts that would be yellow then you would put it into the next color it can be you know green or blue or brown and then or red and then you go like this egg you you see there is like with the birds birds a symbol of fertility mm -hmm. and so on and then and then once you went through all the colors you bring the egg to the flame and you warm up the wax. Wax melts and you wipe it off and the design, and then you can see the design is revealed um, after that. But my understanding would be what you would do is you would put wax on there to protect the white, and then you would put one layer of color on, and then you would burn off the wax. Not, not immediately. You, you, you will do all dips and colors first all of them you will not be taking wax after oh. you've done it so only after so, you've completed all the layers and all the colors then you would melt all the wax at the okay. end like what this is what you are seeing in the picture see she's holding the tool is called kistka yep so it's a wooden tool so like the wax said. the wax protects all of the previous colors that's right it's okay. kind of like right. egg, you know okay so you're adding you're adding wax and later eventually the thing is totally covered in wax right exactly except it, for it, maybe a little piece yeah mm -hmm. that's where you put your last color on exactly it. okay exactly and then the, the areas that are being exposed to the ink um, potentially have multiple colors into them. Uh, so like, for example, if you had a green and then a purple, if you had one part of the egg was green and another part of the egg was purple, you would almost have to, um, you know, expose a section of the shell to put the other color on there because they're incompatible colors. Oh, no, you, no, it doesn't happen like that. <laughs> no, you keep adding. <laughs> no, no you, you no. cover the whole egg in color yeah. after color after color. There are yeah. videos you can you yeah. can um like if you uh, Google this word pisanke, not, yeah. not you can Google it, but also there are YouTube videos that show you. There are so many videos, sure, yeah. YouTube videos that show you how they are made. Yeah. So then then you can you know yeah. with much better like step by step explanations. All right. Yeah. Yeah. We should go. Yeah, it's time. Have a good yeah. follow. Black mask. Yeah. 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 Thanks. It's a nice little museum. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm.